How exactly do Rivian see the world? And can you trust what you see on the driver's display visualization? Yes, but also no. Let's look at it. We've heard Rivian talk about their perception stack many times. So what exactly does that include and what does that even mean? Well, let's dive into it. First, let's talk about the hardware. As a brief overview, there's 11 high resolution cameras surrounding the vehicle in various locations. One note to make here that 11 cameras does not include the mobile eye camera that's no longer in use. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, there's a write-up linked below where I talk about the previous mobile eye system that Rivian used to use before they had their own autonomy system up and running. In addition to these cameras, there's also five radars, again, surrounding the vehicle, with one of them being an imaging radar. We'll come back to what an imaging radar means a little bit later. To process all of that information coming together all at the same time are dual NVIDIA Orin chips. We'll come back to why that's important also a little bit later. As far as the radars go, let's talk about the four corner radars, one on each corner of the vehicle. A typical radar that is in use in most vehicles just gives you a single distance reading. It doesn't necessarily have the ability to tell you exactly where something is. All it can see is there is something this far away and it is moving at this speed. And that's about it. It's pretty rudimentary. So it can't differentiate between something that's high up in the air or down on the ground. It just sees one reading. An imaging radar is unique because that can actually place objects. It can say there's an object that is moving this fast and it is located over here and it's this far away. There's one imaging radar in the front fascia just directly in the center of the vehicle. This allows it to more easily differentiate between things like overpasses and large signs so that the radar doesn't get confused and cause phantom braking or something like that. Okay, so we have those 11 cameras surrounding the vehicle that are giving us hundreds of millions of pixels every frame in addition to radar readings and point clouds and distance. So how do we merge all of that data into something useful where we can see the world around us, that we can perceive? Well, that's where the software perception stack comes into play and how the software perceives the world. We need to do something called sensor fusion. So there's a couple of different kinds of sensor fusion. The two that I want to focus on here are late sensor fusion and early sensor fusion. All right, before we jump right into early sensor fusion, let's talk about late sensor fusion because that gives us kind of a baseline of what we're talking about here. So let's take this example. You process each sensor individually. So we have this camera and it's seeing a vehicle here and a vehicle here. And it identifies those things and then passes it on to the AI. And then we can look at this camera and this camera is seeing this vehicle and it's seeing this thing over here. So we can slowly piece together different things from each different sensor. We process each camera and each radar one at a time and identify what it sees. And then eventually you can piece that together and say, well, this camera saw these things in front and this camera saw these things off to the side and build a worldview entirely around the vehicle. The advantage of this approach is it's much easier to process and piece together and it's relatively simple to understand. Now let's talk about early sensor fusion. Okay, wait, hold on, hold on. Real quick, before we get into what I found on the drive, if you find this content interesting and if you're thinking about buying a Rivian, use my referral code. You can find it linked down below or at the end of the video and it will give you 500 Rivian bucks or 500 credits to the Rivian store. I don't know, they're not called Rivian bucks, but they should be. Anyway, back to the video. Early sensor fusion. This is a little bit different because what it does is it just takes all of the raw data from all of those sensors and just processes it all in one big heap all together. All of the raw pixels, the point clouds, radar readings, all of that stuff. And the advantage of this is it gives you a more holistic worldview and you can process everything all at the same time and get a little bit more nuance of patterns that you see between sensors. As an example that's completely arbitrary, let's say we're looking at this camera right here. You can kind of see this little sliver of something in the edge, but it's not enough to like really tell if anything's there or what it is. So maybe we just throw that out if we're looking at that camera alone. If we look at this camera, the same kind of a deal. We see just a little sliver of something, but we can't really make out if there's anything important there. So we'll just throw that out as well. Then you end up not seeing anything at all because you've just thrown out little tiny pieces that didn't add up to anything. However, if you're looking at both of those cameras at the same time, 
you would probably be able to deduce that, well, the little sliver that I'm seeing here is probably a piece of the same object that I'm getting a little sliver of in this camera. And so we can combine them together and say, okay, well, there's probably something right there. And you get a lot more nuance in the picture that you're seeing. That is the power of early sensor fusion. Okay, editor's note here on the pedestrian example. This is purely for illustration's sake. The vehicle has 11 cameras and I'm only able to record four of them. Plus there's the radars as well. So between all of the sensors that I don't have access to, it probably could see that pedestrian very clearly. That was just me using an illustrative example. The downside of this though, is it takes an immense amount of power to process all of that information all at the same time. You have to synchronize the data from all of those cameras and all of those radars so they come in at exactly the right time, perfectly synchronized. And then you have to have enough horsepower to read that, again, hundreds of millions of pixels just from the cameras alone, not counting the radars. So that's where the dual NVIDIA Orin chips come into play. I'm not exactly sure if Rivian's using them as a redundancy, so one chip is handling all of the processing and then the other one's just a failover or maybe it's utilizing both chips because it just has so much to process. But in either case, we know that that is a big point of how the Rivian Gen 2 autonomy system works, is an immense amount of compute power so that it can process all of this information in real time and display it to us on the driver's screen and make decisions based on it for self-driving features. So here comes the question then, how accurate is that driver's display really? Is it really an accurate representation of what the autonomy computer can see? Or is there stuff that it's not showing us or showing improperly? Well, that's complicated. As always, there's a little disclaimer to throw in here that Rivian hasn't explicitly confirmed any of this. So we're just going off of observation here. On the whole, yes, I think it gives us a decently good idea of what's happening inside of the autonomy computer what things it sees, the cars it identifies, where, how fast they're moving, what the intentions of the autonomy system are when it's actually in control of the vehicle. That said, there are definitely some hints that tell us that while most of what we see on the screen is accurate, there are certainly more things that the autonomy computer can see and is aware of that just aren't being shown on that front end. So what are those hints and why? Lane lines are a great place to start. If you're on a road where all the lanes are uniform, yeah, sure, it makes a lot of sense. However, when the road starts to split apart, for example, when there's a freeway entrance or exit, it doesn't really know how to handle multifaceted lane lines. That said, even though the visualization sort of jumps back and forth between what it shows, the autonomy computer seems to have a very clear idea of when you're on the freeway, when you're not on the freeway, and exactly when to show certain things like lane departure warnings, for example. Vehicle sizing is another important one. You may notice that it shows a certain static model for any vehicle showing a trailer as a semi, or any van is automatically this 3D model, or any pickup truck is this 3D model, and the sizes don't necessarily change to reflect the size of that vehicle. A very clear example of this is one kind of hilarious moment where there was a box truck parked in a parking lot and the 3D model showed it just completely obstructing my path. However, it wasn't blocking my path and I just drove straight through the 3D model and the computer didn't freak out at all. So that again tells me that the autonomy computer knew exactly how big the truck was and where the truck was, but it was just the 3D front end that didn't have an accurate way to display the size of that vehicle. There are also some subtle hints of what's to come on the driver's display. A while back, they changed the 3D models to have a little bit more detail on them, and every 3D model has very clear cutouts where there would be brake lights. So I think that's a fairly good indication that at this point, they're doing some more AI training to identify brake lights and possibly turn signals so that the autonomy system can act on those and also show us on the driver's display. And this, of course, is going to be incredibly important for understanding the intentions and movement of vehicles around as autonomy becomes more and more, well, autonomous. So yeah, on the whole, I would say while it's not perfect and it doesn't show you everything, the driver's display does give us at least a good idea of what the autonomy computer is seeing and thinking. So next time you see a little anomaly on the screen, a vehicle that doesn't look like it's sized properly or something that jumps around a little bit, 
it may not be the autonomy computer. It may just be the 3D rendering that we're seeing of it. And there you have it. That's how Arivian sees the world around it. It's honestly incredible to see how far we've come from even a year ago when I first got my R1. The things that it's learned to see and understand and the stability of its perception has improved drastically. So I can't wait to see where we go from here. <laughs> it thinks he's driving backwards. It straight up thinks he's just driving around backwards. Oh my gosh, another one. What are the odds twice in a row? That's hilarious. And the track 